So what might be involved in switching a 45 loader to a John Deere quick attach style connection point? So what I want to do is I want to go over <clears throat> how this kit may or may not work. Uh, I have not decided if it's going to work yet or not. Um, but I want to go over uh, kind of the machine itself and the issue that I want to try to solve. <clears throat> so this is a stock 45 loader. It's on a John Deere X748. I use this X748 extensively around the house. Um, I like I, I have a four, John Deere 4066R. I use the bucket on it quite a bit. However, this machine serves me really well as a mowing machine, a tilling machine, and a general yard machine to get into tight spots, things along those lines. I'm not taking a five or 6,000 pound tractor and taking it into the yard on a continuous basis. Instead, I have this machine right here, which weighs a little over 1,600 pounds, um, properly ballasted, etc., with the loader. And I can get in there, I can move rocks around, uh, dump rock and flower beds, I can move dirt, things along those lines. Um, if you look back on my videos, I've used this machine quite a bit to do work around the house. Well, I also use it to move uh, pallets around in the storage building and around the shop. I, I use it pretty extensively to move things around. <clears throat> and because I use it extensively to move things around, I have to swap back and forth between the bucket and this set of forks, a set of forks I had built for the machine. Um, but I have to switch back and forth uh, quite a few times a year. I try to save up projects that I need the bucket for, and then I just do them all. Um, but sometimes, you know, you have to change in the middle of the middle of a day, really, to switch from one project to the next. To change from a bucket to the set of forks takes 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the day. Basically, you have to fold the four pin. You have to pull the four pins out. You take those four pins. You put them in the other attachment. Then you have to line up the pins, which sometimes is not an easy task. After you've lined up the pins, then you can hammer them home. Then you have to put the, the keeper pins in right here. And then you have to go in and you have to re-grease everything. So it does take a substantial amount of time to switch from one attachment to the next. However, one of the benefits of this is because the lifting capacity on an X748 or any X series for that matter is extremely limited. Um, I can pick, I can pick upwards, uh, I can pick up upwards of 800 pounds with this machine, but you can't lift it very high. The more weight you put on the front of the machine or out in front of the machine, the lower the ultimate weight of whatever you're lifting can be. So this is a fairly simple design. It keeps the forks extremely close to the tractor. It keeps the weight at a minimum because there is no brackets or anything that has to go on the machine. So, what would I want to do? Well, I want to take and develop some type of quick attach system. The quick attach system <clears throat> on a 1 series, so a 1025R, looks something like this. Is this kit feasible to replace a quick attach system for an X748 and a 45 loader? That is what this video is going to determine what it would take to do it. Now, there are lots of folks out there that have done this conversion and they built their own brackets. And if you have some fabrication skills, it, it it's actually not a hard job to do. However, if you don't have fabrication skills, it becomes somewhat cumbersome. So if you have an easy way to do it, you can do you can actually make it you know cost you a little bit more money but if you have an easy way to do it why not so let's explore what comes in this kit you have this bar right here which runs on the lower arms once runs from one side to the other you have your two brackets that go into the the weldments or the mounting uh, places on the attachment you have your eccentric pins for the curl cylinders so these go right in here like that, and they only fit in one way, like that. So you see how they are eccentric. <clears throat> and that is basically to prevent these from rolling around as, they, uh, as the curl cylinders move in and out. So first challenge is the fact that 
we don't know how wide this is. Well, it's very similar to a one series, or to a, a one series is very similar to an X748. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this up as it would be installed in the tractor and we're actually gonna do some measuring. So this is as this is the width it would be when it is assembled on the machine. And if we take our tape measure, I was gonna put you on a tripod, but I figured you actually needed to see things. If we take our tape measure, and we're just gonna go, I'm gonna get it straightened out, and then we're gonna go middle to middle. So there's the approximate middle. I mean, obviously all these measurements are approximate, but it looks to be about 40 and a quarter inches. Sorry, you're having to read that upside down. Now, if we look, if we go from middle to middle on our 45 loader, approximately, we're looking right at 40, 40 and a quarter, something along those lines. So they are the same width. That's good news. That's actually really good news. So it shows you that we can use some of these parts. Now, we have two other problems. One, our loader frame on the X and the 45 loader is two and a half inches. These brackets, inside to inside, are three inches. So we have a half inch in here that we have to deal with just on this pin. And we have, uh, this is three and three, approximately three and three quarter inches. So we have three quarter, oh, no, we have, what did I say, two and a half? So we've got over an inch, uh, inch and a quarter in here that we have to deal with on that bracket right there, or the lower part of that bracket. So that way, because you don't want the bracket sliding back and forth. The next problem we have to deal with is the size of these pins. The size of the pin on the 45 loader is approximately three quarters of an inch. The size of the pins on the one series bracket is approximately one inch. So we have to take a quarter. Now, Deere actually uses metric, so it's like 0.99 inches or something like that. But Deere does use metric. And so we basically have um, a quarter of an inch that we have to take off of this and this. So this eccentric bolt, this part right here is not that hard. You can chuck it up in a lathe. Basically what you do is you chuck it, you chuck this part up in a lathe, or you, actually you can chuck it up like this. If you use a four jaw chuck, the eccentric doesn't matter. So you chuck it up like that. You um, basically take and you turn down your diameter and you turn your, down your diameter on the other side. Now, when you turn down your diameter, you can leave it the proper diameter on this side, but what you have to do is you have to build a bushing for this side right here. And what you'll have to do is you either have to use washers or you have to use a bushing of some sort, or you have to use washers to get it centered, um, and you have to, or a bushing, and you have to use a bushing on this side to make sure it fits in there. So basically you'll have to have, um, what, a, a one eighth, uh, one eighth in thickness bushing to center that up. This bar on the other hand, this seems reasonably easy to do. Um, this bar on the other hand presents many, many problems because what happens is there is no way to install the bar if you leave the bar your full diameter. Basically, you can't wedge it in there in a particular way. You have to stick it all the way through from one side to the next. So what you have to do is you have to turn your bar down. Now this is assuming that there's nothing in this bar right here related to this grease circ on the end. Now we don't need this grease circ because the 45 loader has grease circs on this, uh, it has one here on the cylinder, and it also has one underneath on the frame of the loader uh, for that, um, for the, the pin holder. And so what we have to do is we have to turn this down to three quarters. We have to turn this down farther, or we'd have to do something in here, um, either cut this bar in half or, um, there's any number of ways you could do it, but you would have to do you have to cut that bar or something along those lines to make sure that you could get the bar in there. You would also have to make a bushing. 
you have to make a bushing for this side and you have to make sure that it was centered on this side and something would have to be done with regards to either turning this down or putting a bushing in there um, I'd have to sit there and think about this for a little bit, but if you cut it off here, you could put a bushing in and you could push it in this way and then you could pin it in that way. Um, or you actually have to push it in this way and that way you wouldn't need a bushing here and this would stay in place. So I don't think you get your metal bar across. Uh, however, that's not too terribly big a deal. Um, that's basically, that metal bar is mostly there to keep the frames uh, very equal. Uh, I wish I actually had that on my 4 Series with the skid steer plate, uh, but I do not. So, those are some of just the challenges as it relates strictly to mounting these frames on the loader. Now, the big thing is these cast iron pieces are not light at all. Um, my guess is, I didn't see a shipping weight on the crate... But my guess is this probably, this whole setup right here weighs in excess of 40 pounds. Not a significant amount of weight when it comes to uh, the overall, overall weight of lifting things, but 40 pounds on this loader actually could mean the difference if you're trying to pick up something on the very edge of the capabilities of the machine. So that is something very important to consider. Now, something else I want, I want you to think about. Now, this is in my case right here, and this is one of the things that I'm extremely hesitant uh, to make this a uh, swap. One of the reasons is the weight, and the second reason is this right here. My set of forks was, like I said, custom made. And if you look, this bracket, is it has some issues it is much taller than the existing bracket um, that holds the pins in now obviously i would have to cut this bracket off and weld a new one on but if it is taller it plays quite a bit with the geometry of how all of this works together um, and i i think i would have to weld some type of plate up here which is what I don't want to do now the nice thing is because they're all the same width it wouldn't present too much of a problem to actually take and use a um, use just a quick attach bucket for this machine and a set of forks so that's not too terribly big a deal um, and sell that set of forks but at the same time do I want to deal with a heavier duty set of forks Undoubtedly, the one series set of forks is probably a little bit heavier. Uh, the guy who built this for me, he potentially he uh, made them lighter specifically for the reason of how I was using the machine. So if you look at that fork frame, it is not nearly as beefy as you would expect uh, a typical fork frame to be because the machine's only capable of, say, you know, 800 to 1,000 pounds, depending on how you have it set up. So I also want to go back and look at the bucket for the machine and we'll explore these frames on the bucket as well. All right, so here is the 45 bucket, which if you look, this bracket is pretty much going to eat up the entire back of the bucket. Um, so all of this, obviously all of this mount would have to come off, but it would eat up, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it would eat up most of the rear of the bucket. Um, and it, that kind of concerns me in terms of uh, just space and using the bucket and potentially changing a little bit of the geometry of the bucket. But I would have to sit down because these pins are, let's see here if I can get do this one handed. So if it would mount flat like that, so it would be about like that. You see how the pins are changed in uh, directionally, they're moved down. Um, probably not a huge deal, but it would change some of the function of the, the bucket. I would have to really sit down and study that and see exactly how much it would change. It might be extremely minimal, but that is something definitely to consider. So, um, that's what I wanted to go over with uh, using a quick, quick attach kit from Deer. Um, 
probably I won't move, I won't make any progress on this until I've really sat down and thought about it. Uh, I probably will take some time and uh, really sit down and draw out, and I might actually turn down the, the bushings and everything on the lathe uh, before I do anything other than uh, mock up. And these, this modification will be the last one that I make. Um, and none of this, aside from the bushings, I don't want to make it permanent until I know that I want uh, that I want this to happen. So if I happen to find a bucket uh, for one series or a attachment for one series, I may buy it just to try it out because then I can mock it up. I can I can turn everything without modifying any of my current equipment. I can try it out and see if I like it. So I think that's where I'm gonna leave this video. Sorry for being so long, but hopefully that explains some of the challenges uh, of using uh, the current quick attach kit uh, from Deer. Obviously you can make your own if you want to. Uh, it just require quite a bit of fabrication. So thanks for watching.